Procalc University. You don't know what you don't know. Hey everybody, Tom with Procalc University. And over the past couple of videos, we've talked about why four to 500 square foot per ton is a bad thing. And then the next video, we, we kind of showed you a little bit about why it's a bad thing where, uh, you know, people are trying to use that to size their air conditioning systems without realizing all of the energy efficient things that they could possibly be putting into their home that would greatly reduce that or, or increase the square footage per ton based on high efficiency windows and things of that nature. And in this video, what I want to do is I want to kind of go a little bit more into depth as to show you how the Manual J program builds out how each construction component that you put in your home that how detailed you have to be in order to get the proper insulation value from that component and where we're going to find that is when when we go into our, our different uh, panels and this is right soft software probably one of the best load calculation and manual D softwares that, that I know of, and there's a few of them out there. We've been using this for since ProCalc started six years ago. I've been using this for about, uh, about 20, 15, 20 years. Um, so let's start off by, um, let's look at the, uh, the, uh, the block wall. Let's look at the block wall. So when we go in and create a wall, what WriteSoft does is it uses the manual J8 code, and when you build it, what it's doing behind the scenes is it's actually going in and building every individual construction component and so your stucco and then your insulation now in this case depending on where you are um, either in florida or up north this r5 insulation could be um, at a different location like in florida this insulation would be on the inside of the wall but if you look, every individual item has a specific R value, a resistance, a insulation resistance to it, and also a U value. And those values, depending on how big or small they are, are going to make a determination of how much heat and how fast that heat or cool, cold air can penetrate through that substance. So you can see with stucco, it has an R value of 11 um, the concrete, now remember with concrete, you have a concrete block. And with the concrete block, here is your actual block wall, but in between here, you have nothing but air. So what it factors is here is your concrete with an R value of 1.42, but the air space itself has a, uh, a lower value, so it doesn't insulate as well. So if you're ever going to build your house with a block wall, you have to understand that just because you're doing it with block, it's not the entire piece of the block itself that it has holes. And another part of that is if you decide to pour or what they call a foam fill within the block wall, is that even though that, that foam may be an R9 fill, that doesn't mean that the block wall itself is an R9 insulation. And you have to be careful with that especially in certain areas uh, like Florida where the code is an R6 for the block wall if you're using the prescriptive method. If you pour R9 inside that block, it will not give you uh, the R6 value that it's looking for. So you have to be real careful. So here's our R5 insulation, which R5 resistance value 5 gets an R5 uh, a resistance value of, of 5. And here's your gypsum board, your drywall. So when we build these components in WriteSoft, and, or when you do it with a manual, hand manual J calculation, every individual component gets calculated to come up with the total R value of that complete structure. Now, for building code purposes, they do not care about this total number. In any building department anywhere, the only value that they are concerned with is what is the added insulation value that you are putting to this. So if this R5 were the zero insulation, oh, it's not going to 
probably have to put a point zero one. Let's see, how about a point one? Let's see if it'll let me. There we go. Okay, so let me put that. So take out that one. So we're actually 3.20. So without that R5 insulation, this entire wall, the stucco, the air gap, the brick, the gypsum board, everything together only gets a, a 3.2. Because remember, we've got to take off the point one for this. But with the true R value of the added insulation to the structure, that's what the building department's looking for. So every component within a house has this. Um, so let's say we have that taken care of. Let's go into the windows and let's look at the windows. Now, windows don't necessarily have um, a breakdown like that uh, as detailed as the wall. Um, they just base it off of the operable, the low E. And, and what you saw here for custom values was just if a homeowner has purchased windows from a manufacturer to put into his home. There's a big giant sticker that's on the front of that huge sticker. And on that, that's the NFRC rating, National Furnishation um, Organization. And they will have a value on that window of what the actual U value is and what the actual SHGC is. So when we're building a window, this stuff gives us a generality of what that window is. However, the best ingredient for this is getting those actual numbers. Now, the building code does have some minimums if you're using the prescriptive, but if you're using performance method, and, and we're going to have another video coming up that's going to talk about the difference of performance and prescriptive method for energy calculations for your state's energy code. But it's always better to have the actual values and you probably saw that in the last video where we adjusted those window values and it actually greatly reduced the amount of air conditioning that was needed in the house. Um, so you have to be careful about that. One of the other things that we look at is also, let's look at the ceiling. So this house happened to have an encapsulated attic where the insulation was on the roof deck. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's make this a regular roof where it's a vented attic with an R30 insulation with the 5H gypsum with some asphalt shingle on it. And now let's go to the custom layers and let's look at this build. Notice everything has its own value. The asphalt shingles, the plywood that's there, the attic area, the ventilation for the area, that space actually has a value associated with it. Um, the insulation that we value that we put in there. Um, Oh, and what this did here is um, in Wrightsoft, instead of just having the R30 as a whole number, what it does is it breaks it breaks the R value up. So together, this is an R30 uh, value. Then you have your gypsum board, and then you have your space in between. So total, when we add all of our construction components together, including the R30, we get we get this value here. Um, and I know it looks a little weird because it said, well, how could you get 29.08 if you have 30? Um, and that's a good question. I'll have to look into that. But, um, and then what this allows is for you to have a true value for your entire components. And then you even have, um, your slab on grade. So if we're going to have a slab on grade, where are we going to put it? And then, and then what it does is it builds these values. And if you actually open up your manual J code book, it's going to have these specific descriptions to help you out. Um, and so here's your slab. Here's your, your soil. The soil on the concrete actually has an R value and insulation value. And when you're, when you're in a northern climate, that makes a big difference because the, the edge of the slab actually will allow, uh, cool air uh, to get in and actually you need to create an insulator around that. Um, this project happens to be in a, in a southern climate, but everything that we built. So this is why it's important. Um, even with your looking at your duct work, this is why it's so important um, when you're talking about those four to 500 square foot per ton, it's so important to understand all the different complexities that come into the manual J to ensure that 
the, the proper amount of heat that could potentially be absorbed by that item, such as the ductwork. If I have an encapsulated attic, which means that the, the insulation is on the roof deck, which means my attic is going to be much cooler, and I factor this as a unvented attic. I mean, watch, watch these numbers. Actually, let me show you something here. We'll go on a breakdown. Let's choose a breakdown here, which allows us to look at the values. And right here, watch your ductwork number. It's, it's 2049 right now. And that's because we have the ductwork in an encapsulated attic. And that attic is going to be much cooler, usually 10 to 15 degrees uh, warmer than what the inside of the house is. Now watch what happens when I change this to an unvented attic for the supply and the return. Watch what happens to that number. It almost doubles. So that means the heat, if, if we had this set incorrectly because we were trying to manipulate the system, we're going to cause the system to think that it needs more heat that it has more heat coming into the building that it needs to get rid of, which is going to cause someone to oversize the system. So now let's put this in a vented attic instead of unvented, and let's see what this does. Okay, it dropped it a little bit because with the ventilation, it helps to reduce the humidity and the temperature in the room. So it's very important. So there's so many different factors involved in doing a manual J calculation properly. Here, here's one last thing I need to let you go. It, let's talk about direction. Right now, notice here is our total load. Okay, we're at, uh, what are we, 20, 28, 29, almost 30,000 BTUs. Watch what happens. I'm going to change the direction of the house. Right now, this is west and this is east. Okay, so watch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the center. What it's going to do is the program is automatically going to say what is the worst possible direction this house could face for the load. So when I double click on it, notice it switches it like that and brings this up to over like 32,000 BTUs. Now, watch this. There's the worst case scenario. Now, what if this house faced north-south? Watch this. So right now, if we look at our calculation, we're at 24,656 plus 53,79. We're at 30,035. Now watch what happens. If I change this to where the house faces north or south, look at that. 22,516, 53,79. That was 2,140 BTUs less. Now it's a small house. It's not a big house. But if this was bigger or had more windows, giant sliding glass doors or whatnot on the east-west side, that number would be greater. But, but 2,100 BTUs could, could technically be the difference between going from a, a, a two-ton to a two-and-a-half or a three to a three-and-a-half, depending on what your load is. So this is just to give you a better bird's-eye understanding of how much truly goes in to getting the right loads so that you're not using that four to 500 square foot per ton. And right now, this house is at 27, 28,000 uh, BTUs, and this is a 1,900 square foot house. So that, that's, that's under two and a half, it's right around two and a half tons. So 1,900 divided by 2.5, that's 760 square foot per ton. Nowhere near four to 500. And we're not even using super high efficiency insulation and windows and stuff in this. Um, so this is how it'll help you to understand that you really need someone you can trust to do proper manual J load calculations. Because there's a lot of companies out there. I know one in particular that his wife, he's an air conditioning guy, and his wife started her own business to do load calculations. She has absolutely no idea about the air conditioning industry. But, and I already have some people that have contacted me telling me how bad they got messed up. But they're just going to throw stuff in there to, to make it look like they want them to look without using the actual values that you're going to be building your home with. So again, 
make sure you get a manual J load calculation from someone you can trust. And I always recommend that you do it from a third party and not your HVAC guy. And I'm not saying that there's a lot of really, really great air conditioning companies out there. We have quite a few of them that are clients of ours. But there are a lot of them out there that will manipulate the load calcs to get the capacity because they make more money off a four ton than they do a three ton. And they make more money off a lot of other things. So they basically can manipulate it to be whatever they want it to be. And you may not know any different. And as a manufacturer's rep for two of the largest air conditioning manufacturers in the world, I constantly had air conditioning companies that they would buy in bulk from us. So they would get special discounts for buying in bulk. And, and some months they would go through all their three ton systems and all they would have left were three and a half or four ton systems. So what would they do? They would tell their sales reps and their installation crews and their service technicians, hey, this is all we got left. You need to make this work in that house. So they're massively oversizing just to get rid of inventory. So you have to be cautious of that. All right. So we're going to have some other videos coming up in the future talking about more about load calculations and duct design and how that's affected. And we're also going to have some videos on energy calculations, which the Florida right now, actually a lot of states are going to have code changes come January 1st. But in Florida, uh, the code change is as of January 1st. There's going to be quite a few building code changes, energy, energy code changes, construction component changes. So if you're not aware of those code changes, you need to go on to the, the state's building code website and pull it up and read through all those. If you're a client of ProCalx, the company that we own, we actually send out a document that we created that breaks down all of the individual code changes uh, based on our services that we provide and how they will affect uh, your home based on the services. So if not, uh, if you're a client of ProCalx, that's great. If not, you know, you want to go out to the website and uh, take a look at that. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you like it. And also click that like button down at the bottom. And also next to the su subscribe button, there's a little bell there. And what that'll tell you is when you click on that, every time that we have a new video that I, I create, um, it's going to give you a little notification to say, hey, ProCalx University put up a new, uh, a new uh, video. So take a look at it. So everybody have a great day. I hope you got a lot of information out of this. ProCalx University. You don't know what you don't know.